This is lesson four. It's going to be section 5.5, but we skipped 5.4, so lesson four. And uh, today, um, teachers, again, we don't we live lives, right? So um, coming from my life, got a hat, got a jacket. Not normally how you see me on every day, but this is how I am now. So learning intentions. We're working with functions, domain, and range. So the learning intention, number one, to be able to identify a graph as a function or not. We worked with functions earlier, and we, we have a working definition for it. Um, but now we're going to be looking at a graph specifically. We're also going to identify the domain and the range of a graph. And we've worked with domain and range before, but now we're going to be looking what happens when it's a graph, how to tell the difference. And we're going to determine the value of the range at a given domain. So if the domain was 2, what's the range? And vice versa. versa. Okay. The first learning intention involved looking at a graph to, to determine if it is a function or not. So first, let's look at the uh, function definition we worked with before. So a function is a relationship, or a relation, so there's a relationship between the two, where each element in the domain has exactly one element in the range. So an example was, a bike has two tires, a car has four tires, a motorbike has two tires, a unicycle has one tire. And this was called an arrow diagram. And each of the domain, the domain is always the first set, has only one arrow coming off of it. So this represents a function. What would not represent a function is if we did this one. So I'm going to represent this in a different color. So one goes to unicycle, two goes to bicycle, two goes to motorcycle, four goes to car. This is not a function because there are two coming off of the same domain. And the rule is each domain element has exactly one element in the range. And because domain has more than one, not a function. So. Now let's look at our definition or how we're going to test this when we're looking at a graph instead of an arrow diagram. So the vertical line test is the test to see if something is a function or not. So a function has no two points that lie on the same vertical line. If you can't remember horizontal and vertical, think of the horizon in the distance. Horizon is horizontal. Vertical, up and down. Someone who has a high vertical jumps high because it's up and down. So Let's use the vertical line test. If I had a graph and it looked like this, I'm going to try the vertical line test. So if I draw a line straight up and down, it only goes through once. It only goes through once. It only goes through once. Only goes through once. 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 Every vertical line will only go through this graph one time. So it is a function because a function has no two points. So there are not two points on any of these. A non-function might look like this. So if this was my graph, start drawing vertical lines. Looks like a function, because it only crosses once. Looks like a function, only crosses once. Uh-oh, this one crossed three times. And the rule is it has no two points that lie on the same vertical line. This vertical line has two points on it not a function. Okay, if I was to just make some space here and draw a graph that instead just involved dots, this is a function. I can draw a straight vertical line through each one and it only ever crosses through once. If I do one here, This one, it's going through twice, so not a function. The vertical line test is how we test functions or not. Our second learning intention involved domain and range, and this is a big one. This is going to stick with you through grade 10, grade 11, grade 12. And so let's look at the definitions. We've seen them once before. Domain is the set of first elements in a relation. So there's a relationship when there's a graph. It's how the one axis relates to the other. So as time goes on, something's happening. Um, range is the set of the second elements in a relation. 
So before, things were always ordered in a table. Left was domain, right was range. Well, on a graph, domain is always going to be left and right, or horizontal. Range is always going to be up and down. So we have our domain and our range. That's something you have to remember. Um, one way to think of it is the lion's domain. Okay, that's something you may have heard before. Well, a lion walks on the ground. It doesn't fly up and down. Okay, so domain, lion's domain, lion walks flat. Okay, so domain, another way to think of it is x-axis. Range, y-axis. Okay, so for the domain, there's going to be two ways we are going to look at these. And one is going to be when there's dots. The other is going to be when it's a connected graph. Okay, so for domain and range, when it's the dots, we say D for domain belongs to the set. And what I've done is, have you ever noticed those little squiggly brackets on a computer calculator? Well, the squiggly brackets in math represent a set is coming. So the domain is the set of these elements. The domain, left and right, is made up of the number 1, 2, 4, and 5. The range up and down is made up of 1, 3, 3, but we're only going to say it once, and 4. So the range is made up of 1, 3, and 4. So it's, the domain is the set, because it's a set notation brackets of 1, 2, 4, and 5, because that's where this exists at 1, this exists at 2, this exists at 4, this exists at 5, and the range exists at 1, 3, and 4, a height of 1 height of 3, and a height of 4. Now we're going to look at some domain and ranges using some graphs here. And with domain and range, we're always going to represent everything in terms of x and y. Domain is x, range is y. Okay, so I'm going to put x and y on all of my grids here. And what you need to do is you need to be able to read coordinates. So it always uses x first and then y, alphabetical order. If for some reason it was m and n, alphabetical order, domain would be m, range would be n. So in this case, this point here is the point left on x, so it's negative 1, down on y, so it's negative 1. So I've put here, maybe I'll move this closer so we can see it a little easier. So I've put the point negative 1, negative 1. This coordinate is x, y, because always x first, then y. It goes over 1, up 1, 2, 3. So it's coordinate 1, 3. So the way this is going to work, there's kind of a few types. There's ones that stop at both ends, which are represented by a dot. Some will stop at one end, but continue going at the other. Okay, and I've got two of those here. And some will start at a point and go in both directions. So for each of these, we have a domain and we have a range. When we're using um, connected lines, we don't have to do the set notation brackets. When it was the dots, we used the little set brackets. We don't have to if they're connected. So first, domain is left and right. And domain is what are all of the elements of this going left and right? So, well, so just looking at x, it's at negative 1, it's at 0, and it's at 1. But we're not going to put negative 1, 0, and 1 because this is actually at negative 1, negative a half, 0, half, 1. But it's more than that. It's at negative 1, negative 0.9, negative 0.8, negative 0.7, over and over and over. So there's every single decimal possible. Well, we can't write those out. So what we do is we're going to use this notation, which really means between. Okay, so when you see less than x greater than, that means between. And I'm going to show you, I'll explain it again. So for the domain, the domain is between, and domain is x. So the furthest left is negative 1, the furthest right is positive 1. So it's between negative 1 and 1. And because it includes negative 1, it's also greater than or equals to, or less than or equal to, and greater than or equals to. So make sure you're including these equals to's if it's solid dots. So 
if you don't like between, I guess what's really happening is this. If this graph is between negative 1 and 1, it is x is greater than negative 1. And you see it's always bigger than negative 1. And it's less than 1. It's always less than 1. Now what's the range between? The range, and remember range is y, so I'm going to use a y here, not an x. Domain is x, range is y. The range, its lowest point is negative 1, its highest point is 3. So the range, the height of my graph here, the lowest point is negative 1. y, or my heights, are always bigger than negative 1, it's always bigger than negative 1, and always less than 3. It's always less than 3. Okay. Now let's look at how we're going to do this with arrows. Okay. And um, I'm just going to erase this part. And I have two questions here. I have A and I have B. So A will do the domain and the range. And then B will do the domain and the range. Now, the domain for A. Domain, left and right, and always x. So the domain of this is it starts at negative 1, and there's an arrow on it, which means it's going to keep going, 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 going forever. So it's always smaller than negative 1, because negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, those numbers are getting smaller. So if it's always smaller than negative 1, x is always less than or equal to negative 1. And if it eats alligator, okay, eats the bigger number, this is my alligator, draw some teeth on it if you want. X is smaller than negative 1, negative 1's bigger, so the alligator's eating the negative 1. Now the range. Range is going up and down. My lowest point is a height of 1. And then the heights are always getting bigger. So Y is always bigger than 1, because it starts at 1, then the heights go 2, 3, 4, so on. Now B. Domain, left and right. The domain starts at 0, and it's going to the right, so it goes 0. 1, 2, 3. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to the right. So my domain is x, is always getting bigger than its smallest point. It's always getting bigger or equal to 0, because all of these future x's are bigger than 0. And the range, same as the last one. Its lowest point is 1, and it's always going to get bigger, because it's going up and up and up and up. So the range is always greater or equal to 1. Now let's look at this one. We have a domain, and we have a range. So our domain here is, where does this exist left and right? Well, I've got some arrows on it. It's going forever to the right. It's going forever to the left. So we're going to say all real numbers. It is infinity going that way. It's infinity going that way. So it's all of them. So a fancy way to write all real numbers is really a capital R. And a lot of times you'll see it with an extra spine on the back. Or they'll just write all real numbers. Because it's everywhere. It's going forever. Okay. Now the range, the heights, this one has a high point. It's not going up forever. It's going down forever. So it has a high point of 3. So it's starting at 3 and always getting smaller. So y is always less than. Remember, it always eats the bigger number, so it's eating the 3 because the 3 is bigger than all of its future numbers going down. Okay, so our last um, learning intention was to determine the domain when you're given a range and determine a range when given a domain. So here's the graph y equals negative 2x plus 3. And we'll get into graphing lines in the next chapter, but I've given you the graph here. Determine the domain. Domain is this way when the range is negative 1. So if range is up and down, look for a height of negative 1. Well, the negative 1 height is right here. So I'm going to draw a line. What is my domain? Well, my domain, when my height was negative 1, 
my domain, my x value was 2. So it equals 2. Next one, determine the range. What is the range? Range is height. Determine the range when the domain is 0. So domain of 0, okay, here's domain, 0, 1, 2, 3. So domain of 0, what is my range at this point? My range is 3. And so now before we go on, the one thing that shows up a little in this chapter or this section that showed up last day was which is the independent variable, which is the dependent variable. Reminder, independent variable, independent, is the domain. Okay, This is usually time. And the dependent variable is range. The dependent variable depends on this. Independent is going to happen no matter what. It's time or something like that, which is always going to happen. And dependent depends on how much time has gone by, depends how high you are. Or how much time goes go by depends how much money you've made. Things like that. Okay. So today's topic is one of the most important ones. It is going to follow you through grade 10, 11, grade 12 as well. So you're going to do a whole bunch of questions today. I don't want you doing A, C, E. I want you doing all of them. Okay. If you can do this, it will go quickly. If it's going slow, it means you need more practice and you're not totally grasping it yet. So make sure you do all of these. And please make sure you get this one. Um, if you're not getting it, ask me again to find a way so that you can understand this. Good luck. Stay classy, math class.